On a recent survey, one of the most hated attachments came back as a quick hitch, a three-point quick hitch. Can you believe it? And I think that's because there's a misconception between the term quick hitch and then what it actually does. And so today we are gonna bridge that gap, give you some quick hitch tips, and we'll see if we can turn that most hated attachment into what many others call their most favorite. But before we get to that, I have a new sticker, well actually a pair of them, that I need to put on my tractor. So we're gonna knock that out really quick and then we'll get to it. Got a little scratch we can cover up and add this warning message at the same time, a little safety message. I'm all about safety. Let's work it out. Much better. Now we are proud to be sponsored by Boro Wheel Spacers. If you are feeling tippy on your tractor, work on uneven ground, then wheel spacers can make a big difference. They're gonna widen your footprint and add more stability to your tractor. Check out Bora. They are made in America and a lifetime warranty. Link down below. Also, I need to put it up higher. So almost basically even with the even with the bottom there. Not like that. Okay, so I'm gonna take off these brackets too, these black uh, hanging brackets. We call them hitch hangers. It's a product we have coming out soon. I just wanted to show you what they are um, because they're gonna work with a quick hitch. Still in the prototype phase, gonna come out soon with them, but we're designing it to work with any quick hitch. That's our intent right now, but you can see the concept here. Your three-point hitch or your quick hitch can still be available to put um, a landscape rake, a rear blade, whatever else it is. And if you need more down pressure because these tractors don't have down pressure, we covered that recently in a video, this extra weight can make a big difference on scraping ability if you need it. And on top of that, it can also add weight for additional counterweight for you uh, if you're using the front end loader and you need more weight on the back side too. So you'll see we have three 70 pound weights on either side. So that's an extra 420 pounds of total weight. You can use 41 pound weights if you want to. You can still fit three of them on either side. The additional benefit is if maybe you're on a side hill and you want to have just weight on on one side to try to give you some more stability. You could, you know, maybe the hill's going down that way. You could take the weights off of that side, just have weight over here. You wanna keep the weight low, all right? This isn't really designed to be used with a quick hitch raised way up high and have the weight up high and, and get a, a higher center of gravity. You wanna keep everything down further towards the ground if you can at all. Um, that's what's really gonna come into play and make a big difference. So there's a lot of different reasons you may want this product. Those are just some of them, but either way, they're gonna be for sale soon on our website. All right, I wanna go over the basics really quick here of what a quick hitch is. So this is the quick hitch, all right, this whole red contraption. Nice to see it stands out. You can tell it what's separate from the rest of the three-point hitch. And so the quick hitch itself, whether it's a Spico, an iMatch, a Land Pride, a Harbor Freight, whatever you get, is gonna be built to the same specification that controls the dimensional spacing. There's gonna be a couple of critical dimensions that apply to both the quick hitch as well as quick hitch compatible attachments. So pay attention. If you don't know if your equipment is quick hitch compatible, you can just measure these couple of different areas here, the critical dimensions, and you'll be able to verify if it'll work for you. Now we're talking about the category one quick hitch, all right? So Cat 1, which is your 1025s, your Kubota BXs, anything in the subcompact class, up through like a 4 Series, like a 4066R, uh, a Kubota L6060, anywhere along those lines and everything in between. So the first critical dimension is going from left to right along your bottom links, all right? So on your attachment, the two lower pins, you need to do measurements on that point. So outside to outside, which again, a fixed position, there's no adjusting the quick hitch, is gonna be 29 and a quarter inches. Inside to inside is 27 inches. So this is a quick hitch compatible attachment. You saw me take it off at the beginning of the video. So what you wanna measure is your inside to inside. We know that the quick hitch is 27 inches inside to inside. So let's see what our pins are here for our pin slots. So inside to inside, 
we have 26 and three quarter inches. Okay, so we know that our pin on the inside dimension is gonna be okay. Now let's see if it extends beyond the maximum quick hitch dimension to have enough space in there. So if we measure the outside of this point to the other side, get that tight there, 30 and seven eighths. All right, so we needed only 29 and a quarter. So we know that our lower hooks on our quick hitch will fit within these allotted spaces. So that's one critical dimension. The other critical dimension is gonna be from your lower hook to your upper hook. And on this one, you have some flexibility. It is gonna be a range from 14 and a half, which is where it's at right now, all the way up to 17 and a half inches. Now you have adjustment up and down there, three inches of play. I got to imagine that's for a certain reason. I don't know the reason, but it's within the ASAE specification. And you will notice that different brands, different manufacturers are going to have an adjustment range in there. And that's why you see all of these bolt holes to be able to move that top hook up and down and make it work for your attachment. And so on an attachment, it's typically not as easy as measuring left or right. You kind of got to eyeball a line in there and then do a dimension and you just want to get close enough, a, a half inch this way or the other way is not going to matter too much since you have flexibility. But you can see we're right within that range. We saw it hooked up earlier and we're going to be okay. And again, 14 and a half to 17 and a half inches, you can adjust that top hook as needed to make it fit. Hey, I hope you're enjoying today's video. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button down below to see more of them. We have over 450 other videos for you to check out as well. And if you are in the market for a tractor attachment, while well, we sell and ship them all over the country, check out goodworkstractors.com. Now, most of these top hooks are going to be bolted on. So you have to break out your sockets to unbolt it, move it up and down. I find that to be really annoying. I came across these quick release pins, I guess you call it. They are available at boltonhooks.com. If you have an eye match, they have a certain version. If you have an imported or everything else category, they have a different pin that'll work, but you simply pull the retainer out. Oh, I promise you it's easier and then pull this out, repeat, and you can move it up and down. So this is a toolless way to get that adjustment. And if you are bouncing back and forth between attachments a lot, you know what I mean. This takes a lot of the pain out of that process, makes it exponentially easier. I'm not affiliated with bolt-on hooks, but we'll put a link down below where you can get these. It's a cheap, easy upgrade for your quick hitch. All right, so now for a really big difference between the Spico E-Hitch and almost every other quick hitch that's out there on the market, you want to pay really close attention to these bottom two hooks, the size of the slot. And so what you're going to notice on the Spico E-Hitch is that this slot size, the diameter of it, is a lot smaller than most of the others on the market. And what that means is that for your Category 1 attachments, which are the only size attachments that will fit on your Category 1 tractor, it's a direct fit to the pin. So I'm actually taking this pin right off of that snow blower that we had hooked up and you're going to see what I mean. Let me do it over here. So this is a seventh, eighth, seven eighths pin. Okay. And that's what size the lower pins are on a category one quick hitch. The upper is actually three quarters of an inch, but you can see what I mean. This category one pin fits directly in there. Nothing else is required. The other quick hitches that I'm talking about require you to put a bushing or a big sleeve over top of this pin right here. And the slot is going to be larger. It's going to be wider in diameter. And you have to buy a set of those sleeves or those bushings for every single three point attachment that you have. With the price of everything going up, I've seen those bushing sets go for over $50 a set. So if you had four attachments, just for example, that'd be $200 in bushings on top of the quick hitch cost just to get set up with the quick hitch compatibility. Okay, so now you're gonna notice a little bit of play right here. You'll notice some play in the top hook. These top hooks are always oversized. Even the Spico E-Hitch comes with the oversized top hook. So I like this oversized slot. It does help and make it a little bit easier to connect to the different attachments. I found no drawbacks of having this oversized and not using a bushing up here. We've sold thousands of these things and don't have any negative feedback regarding this either. So the bottom size is what's important. And you'll notice, again, that little bit of play there, not a big deal. I've never seen any drawbacks using equipment in the field. And even the version that uses the bushings is still gonna have some play in there as well. So that's just the manufacturing process that I found no matter what quick hitch it is. You always have a little play in there, but I haven't found anything negative to say about it. Now, a question that's often brought up though is, well, there's gotta be a legitimate reason to have those bushings on the attachment, on the different pins, protecting them, doing doing something, <laughs> right? Well, I've talked to every manufacturer that I've ever worked with that sold those, you know, with uh, WorkSaver, with uh, Nortec, with Spico. I've talked to John Deere dealers, to Kubota dealers that sell Land Pride and the iMatch. 
I have yet to have an actual legitimate reason for why bushings may be required. It seems like a really easy upsell just to have an extra part to make the product work. But besides that, I really don't know of a reason why you would need them over having a direct pin fit like the Spico offers. Now, for those of you with older tractors, you may still have a category one three point hitch, but these lower stabilizer or sway arms may not connect somewhere in the middle of the arm. They may actually come all the way out and attach right where your lower link is at. All that really means is the pins that come with the quick hitch aren't gonna be long enough for you. Just go to Tractor Supply or Harbor Freight or wherever it is, get some longer pins to put through there, you'll be okay. Now, speaking of pins with the Spico quick hitch, you're gonna get the two lower pins. The upper one isn't included. I don't know why they just don't send them to us so we don't have anything to send along to you guys, but it's just a standard three quarter inch pin that you would use to connect any regular three point attachment. Again, your lower pins are always gonna be seven eighths. The upper is gonna be three quarters. So it's just any regular old pin that you would get for any other attachment that you would use on your tractor. And it's probably worth reiterating the fact that these are an add-on. We added these on. You are gonna get two regular bolts with nuts on them that come standard on the quick hitch. But again, check out bolt-on hooks if you want to. That got me thinking though, for some of you, if this lower dimension isn't going to work, if it doesn't line up, there's gonna be some attachments that actually have these lower links on a rail. And so you can loosen things up and slide the lower links in or out to make it work. We had it on a sweep all attachment, Tar River Tillers, I think it was. There's probably some others. I think a, um, a Frontier Tiller that I had a long time ago had that same kind of concept. So look into that. It's not gonna be the solution for everybody, but depending on your attachment, you may be able to make that adjustment by sliding it left or right. So the term quick hitch comes with some expectations, right? Of being quick to connect. <laughs> and so that's perfectly logical, makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't mean it's gonna take every last bit of pain and struggle out of the process. It's gonna eliminate, I think, 90 plus percent of it. And so I think a lot of folks think they're never gonna to have to leave the operator seat if they get a quick hitch, and that's not the case. One of the common adjustments that you will need to make is gonna be with your top link. You're gonna to have to lengthen it out or shorten it up because every attachment is set up a little bit different. Not every lower link is perfectly vertical with the upper link sometimes they're set back sometimes it's not on a perfectly even piece of ground there's a lot of variables that come into play and so your top link should actually adjust really easy it should move around just like this if it's bound up you're going to have to work through it uh, apply some grease and then make sure you stay on top of it because if you can move it easily like this it's going to be a pain-free process you're just lengthening it out and adjusting it and what that's going to do is change the angle for the connection all right and sometimes especially if it's a new attachment for you. You're gonna to have to do this two or three times to figure out kind of that right general ballpark to hook something up. And then after you get it connected, you have to readjust to whatever angle you want the attachment at anyways. And so really, as far as that goes, it's the same process with or without a quick hitch. That's an adjustment to use the attachment to make sure that it's gonna be uh, tilted properly forward or sitting level on the ground or whatever you need with the certain circumstances that you're working with. But this top link is meant to be adjustable. We actually posted something in a recent video uh, that somebody else came up with. They added a whole tire to make it really easy and fast to spin this thing around and lengthen it or shorten it. A couple other gentlemen saw that video and sent me pictures of their own version of what they did as well but a super creative solution if you're not that handy and if you have extra hydraulics on the back of your tractor you can add on a hydraulic top link which is really the cat's meow because that is just a, a push of a button or a lever from the operator station to lengthen or shorten and i tell you if you don't want to leave the operator seat that's something worth looking into. And again, you can see how freely I'm moving this, all right? If you have a bunch of weight, if say your pin on your attachment is inside here and it's kind of bound up or hung up on something, you're not gonna easily move it. So make sure you lower it down or position it in a way that you can get the weight off of this top hook. It's gonna make life a lot easier. Don't make it harder than it has to be. You know, so I'm saying all of this stuff to kind of put the expectations and match it with reality out there. It's not a completely pain-free process, but if you have a quick hitch, you have quick hitch compatible attachments, you're gonna be able to use this and getting it set up the right way, knowing the information ahead of time can help level out those expectations and make it so that there's not disappointment when you get it and find out it's not gonna work with your attachments because of the wrong spacing or the wrong height, whatever it is. And I know there's folks out there that don't think quick hitches are worth getting and the older that you get, the more inconvenient, the more of a pain and frustration that it is to try to hook up different attachments to your tractor. If you're gonna hook up one attachment and leave it on there forever, this isn't worth getting. But if you have multiple attachments, um, 
different projects throughout the summer or throughout the different seasons. These are super handy. We get a lot of great feedback. I love to hear from you guys on what you think about it either way. We did a whole video comparing the Spico versus some others that are on the market. The Spico ranks right at the top or very close to the top in pretty much every category out there. It weighs 70 pounds, which is very heavy. This is actually a decent amount of additional ballast weight. It's like one of those big suitcase weights that we had hanging on here, right here as well. So that makes a big difference. And you're also gonna see these gusses. These are very large gusses, very good support and bracing for the quick hitch itself. While these are listed as being rated up to 50 horsepower, I've been using one on my four series tractors, the 4066R, the 47. 20 for as long as I can remember. I guess we're going on, is this year number three now maybe of this one? But either way, those are 66 horsepower tractors. They work very well and I'm very comfortable selling these to folks that use them on a four series tractor. And I can tell you the bigger the attachments that you have, you know, maybe not so much on a little one series, but when you get to the two, the three, the four series, if you're trying to manhandle those attachments and move them around left to right to get them to line up with your three point arms, I can remember doing that and I just refuse to pretty much do that whenever possible anymore. But there are a couple attachments out there that I know are not quick hitch compatible. Number one is gonna be a post hole digger, all right? And that is because for a post hole digger, you actually have to remove the whole top link in order to use that. And so if you have to take the top link off, there's nothing for the quick hitch to attach to either. That arm on the postal digger ties in right to the base of where your top link would connect on your tractor. Now, finished mowers are typically not quick hitch compatible either. There may be a few out there, few and far between, but most of them, I don't really know the reason why, but most of them are not gonna work with a quick hitch. Brush hogs will, not a problem at all, but the finished mowers, like a belly mower, except on the three point, those are what I'm talking about. And then essentially anything that has a, a swing or a pivot on it with a PTO shaft, all right? I'm talking about things like flail mowers that side shift over. It could be a stump grinder. We, we showed one of those, a 3P24, that can swing on a big arc left and right. And the reason for that is that with your PTO shaft that comes in and out and has to angle over here, it's gonna interfere with these arms. There's just not enough swing angle in between the arms of a quick hitch. And so that's the reason those aren't compatible. And since we're talking about making life easier, if you want a complete quick solution, I guess, on the backside of your tractor, this Spico is gonna solve the three point process for the PTO process. If you hate hooking up your PTO, the tractor PTO link is a system that can make life a lot easier there as well. Again, a lot of folks out there don't struggle with this, but some do. And the older you get, if you have arthritis, other mobility issues, extending this out into an easier to connect location is gonna be a game changer. The tractor PTO link, you buy this directly from their website. You use code GWT to save 5% off your order. Now, with all that said, there are gonna be certain situations when a quick hitch just won't work for you. So if you have non-quick hitch compatible attachments maybe you are only using attachments like a swing angle flail mower or the post hole digger and it's just not practical you may want to look into a pat's quick hitch system which is only going to go on the lower links it's going to kind of be a same kind of a mechanism like this to connect uh, to the attachment in my mind it's not nearly as convenient as a quick hitch but it is going to be the right solution for some of you in certain situations and all that said sometimes it does take away all the effort if you get it just right you never have to leave the operator seat People of YouTube, that was one one take. Didn't have to make a single adjustment. That was like the easiest thing I've ever done in my life. It does not always go that smooth, but I'm pointing it out because that's how smooth that just went. Not a single adjustment. Besides, we'll probably adjust the top link and maybe the side link, make sure everything's level the way we want it. But that hookup, piece of cake. Spico Quick Hitch. All right, so you can buy this quick hitch from us at Goodworks Tractors. We pack and ship these all over the country every single day of the week. It includes free shipping to 36 states right now, just a little bit extra to go to some farther out west and southern states. But go to goodworkstractors.com. Again, this one does not use bushing, so you're gonna save a lot of money that way. It just makes more sense to connect directly to a category one pin. We sell all sorts of tractor attachments. Most of them are gonna be quick hitch compatible, work right with this system as well. So if you like tractor stuff, make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit that subscribe button down below. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.